I'm going to show how to convert an old analog oscilloscope into a DSO. No more lame jokes, an actual way of doing it, but first the obligatory promo. Along with a multimeter, an oscilloscope, if not exactly essential, certainly make many hobby electronic projects much easier during building and troubleshooting, being able to probe signal amplitude, frequency and form. Especially since old analog oscilloscopes are widely and cheaply available. For example, I got my two channel 50 MHz unit for $40 on eBay. But obviously an old analog scope doesn't provide the convenience of automatic waveform measurements and screen capture etc like digital storage oscilloscopes provide. But even cheap digital scopes, which means limited bandwidth, poor quality and or both, start at several hundred dollars. So what would you need to do to convert a cheaply available analog scope into a DSO without spending too much time, effort and money, which otherwise means you could just go and buy one? A DSO at a very basic block functional level captures the analog signal converts this to digital, stores this to memory, which can then be analysed as desired with output display. So to convert an analog scope into a DSO, at least a very basic one, the analog scope captures the input signal similar as a DSO, but a webcam takes an image of the CRT as a digital conversion, stores this to disk, and the stored image can be analysed and displayed on PC with software giving similar functions as a DSO. Such a poor man's conversion can't provide DSO features such as single shot or other advanced triggering, but you can greatly enhance the ease of use and utility of an old analog scope just by adding a webcam, which most people have available anyway, and using a bit of custom software to analyse the image. To begin the demonstration, first you need some method of attaching the webcam to the analog scope so the CRT screen can be captured. All that is needed is to ensure that the webcam can be aligned parallel to the analog scope CRT and for the highest resolution results at an appropriate distance so that the webcam's field of view is taken up as much as possible by the CRT display. This could be as simple as using a piece of plywood with threaded rod to give an adjustable mount or even with cardboard hot gluing something together. However, since I have a 3D printer, I made a custom mount that provides an easily adjustable 3 degrees of freedom, specifically to fit my scope CRT and style of work.
to analyze the waveform in terms of voltage, period, frequency, etc., such as this 0.5 volt 1 kHz square wave, the waveform needs to be captured from the webcam live feed by clicking the Capture Image button or pressing the spacebar on the keyboard. The captured image will be displayed in the Analyze Image window of the software interface. The various cursors, vertical cursors for time and horizontal cursors for voltage, are displayed by clicking the appropriate checkbox controls. The cursors are distinguished by colour, with the legend automatically annotated on the waveform in the Analyze Image window. Double clicking on a screen cursor displays a colour selection dialog box, enabling the colour of cursors to be selected by the user. With the mouse, click and hold on the desired cursor and then move the mouse to position the cursor as desired on the waveform. After releasing the mouse, the cursor can be more precisely moved by using the keyboard arrow keys. Upon releasing a screen cursor after it was moved, the appropriate calculation, frequency, voltage, etc., is automatically performed with the results displayed in the screen cursor control section and annotated on the analyze image window. The measurement mode section provides a number of tabs which in turn enable various specialized functions and calculations. For example, the duty cycle of a square wave. Click the duty cycle tab in the measurement mode section and if the second time vertical cursors are not displayed, click the second time cursors checkbox. Then click the Calc Duty Cycle checkbox. With the captured image displayed in the analysis window, align the channel A vertical cursors, set to yellow in this case, to encompass one complete period of the waveform, which already has been done in the previous step measuring the frequency. Align the second time vertical cursors to span the high portion of the waveform. The duty cycle will now be automatically calculated. Rise time can also be calculated. With the captured image displayed in the Analyze window, align the channel A horizontal cursors to span the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the waveform. I specifically made the voltage span the 0 to 100 range on the CRT Groticule, which is a necessary step of doing this manually, only to show that the software is calculating correctly. Click the Rise Time tab in the Measurement Mode section, click the Measure Rise Time checkbox, and then click the Calc 10 to 90% Levels button. The calculated 10 and 90% voltage levels of the peak-to-peak -peak voltage represented by the Channel A horizontal cursors will then be displayed. That's the light blue dashed lines. Align the Channel A vertical cursors to mark the intersection of the 10 and 90% voltage levels with the waveform. Then click the Calc Rise Time button and the rise time will be calculated and displayed. Optionally, the oscilloscope rise time parameter can be entered to enable calculation of the real transition time, which takes into account the response time of the oscilloscope to measure the waveform. Capacitance measurement can be done with an RC series circuit in conjunction with a square wave input with the voltage across the capacitor versus time measured with the oscilloscope. In order to achieve the typical profile of a charging capacitor required by the measurement, the user will require experimenting with the series resistance value and the applied square wave frequency. You need to ensure that the capacitor is fully charged and discharged within the square wave duty cycle. The example shown is with a 600 ohm series resistor, that's the output impedance of the signal generator used, and a 150 Hz square wave. The capacitor under test was a nominal 0.47 microfarads. With the captured image displayed in the Analyze window, align the Channel A horizontal cursors to encompass the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the waveform. Click the Capacitor tab in the Measurement Mode section, and then the Measure Capacitor checkbox. Click the Calc 63% Voltage Rise button, and the calculated 63% voltage level of the peak-to-peak -peak voltage represented by the Channel A horizontal cursors will be displayed. That's the light blue dashed lines. Align the Channel A vertical cursors to mark the intersection of the start of the rising portion and the 63% voltage level of the waveform. Click the Calc Capacitance button and the capacitance will be calculated and displayed. To increase accuracy, I changed the time base on the analog oscilloscope to 0.5 microseconds to get an expanded portion of the waveform on the CRT screen, and so need to change the setting on the webcam oscilloscope software to match. Recapture the image, and then realign the vertical cursors with the start of the rising portion and the 63% voltage level of the waveform. 
and then click the Calc Capacitance button to get the updated capacitance measured. Well that concludes the demonstration. The software is available for free download at my website as shown. If you found this interesting and or useful, I appreciate your time to give a thumbs up, comment and or subscribe.